If you're going to say to somebody, oh, I talk to dead people, that's a claim that requires evidence or, you know, I mean, proofs. He's a trusted advisor to celebrities from Courtney Cox to Goldie Hawn. Thomas John is an in-demand celebrity medium. He's one of the nation's most world-renowned mediums. There are so many people out there that aren't actually psychics and mediums that are charging people saying they're psychic and mediums. There is no ethical governing body. Do you feel like there's a dark side to the medium world? I am blown away. I don't think I've ever been in a house this nice in LA. They did see there's like one person who's really like out to get you, I feel like. Do you wanna talk about that or not? Look at things like the Salem witch trials, you know, where people who were different were persecuted. Matt, do you have the name Mary? Yes. Okay. Place is gorgeous. You. Oh my gosh, I didn't know what to expect. <gasps> oh my gosh. So, yeah. I am blown away. I don't think I've ever been in a house this nice in LA. Oh, wow. Well. How long have you lived here for? Um, for about a year, yeah, because I, I actually lived out here for a while and then I moved back to New York for a year and then I came back. It's a nice neighborhood too. It, yeah, I love it's it. Yeah, it's peaceful. Yeah, it's kind of like, I like it because it's kind of private, yeah. Yeah, and still very central though. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah, you know, let me hold you? Now you're nice to me, huh? Okay, fine. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you for having me thank in this gorgeous for, place. Thank you for doing this. I was so excited when you followed me on Instagram. Oops, sorry, honey. <laughs> I was so excited when you followed me on Instagram because I've watched a lot of your clips on YouTube mm -hmm. and the stuff you do is so amazing. And also I'm just fascinated with mediums and uh -huh. the psychic ability. I really like what you do. So I was kind of thought it would be a good, good fit. There are only so many mediums that are so known like you and I guess Tyler Henry uh -huh. and the Long Island medium. Right. Do you know them? I don't know Teresa. Tyler and I have had a couple of conversations before. How does like one crossover to become like a celebrity medium like you are, like Tyler Henry is. I started doing being a professional medium when I was about 23 years old. And I was living in New York at the time. I mean, I always say if I lived in Idaho, I would probably have, you know, farmers as my, you know, it's just like, that's who lives in New York. It's everybody's like in fashion, magazines, entertainment, musicians. So I would get a lot of that people. I wasn't like actively trying to read, you know, famous people, but I would just get celebrities. 90% um, of the time, I wouldn't even know who they were or things like that. I remember one time I did a reading for somebody very well known, Courtney Cox. She came to my house and I was dating a guy at the time and he was like, that was Courtney Cox. I was like, I had, I had no idea that was Courtney Cox. I mean, it didn't look like her to me. He worked um, for James Corden and The Late Late Show and Carpool Karaoke. And they sort of said, hey, what do you think about this as a show for you? So do you believe in psychics or people like that? No. Do you? I am a psychic. Oh, oh my gosh. There's actually somebody coming through right now. <laughs> Dolly. <gasps> I truly love the show. It must come with a pressure to you, though. I mean, I'm sure, especially as you gain popularity and mm you know, fame that people are reaching out to you and begging for a reading if they can't afford it. Or there's like a lot of stress, I'm sure that comes with your star meter rising as a medium. It comes from different angles. One would be there's the, the sort of like the pressure of always proving yourself, you know? There's people that come out of a, a real sort of skeptical mindset and they actually will, you know, sort of publicly attack mediums or try to debunk mediums. So there's that whole that group. You also have just the, the element of just dealing with the human element of just people are grieving, people are struggling, um, people are wanting specific answers to things that, um, you know, sometimes that message may not come through. Um, that person may not want to come through. So there's that. And then it's sort of like, well, how come, you know, I try to foster and cultivate um, a very loving, positive community. I try to give back in a way. Almost weekly, I'll go on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook and do an hour or two of, 
you know, might do card pulls, or I might do angel cards, or I might do messages through. Some people love that. But yeah, of course, I mean, it's similar to, you know, you wouldn't go into a BMW dealership and say, oh my God, I can't believe how much you, you people charge here, you know? In the anthropology of human existence, you know, mediums, mystics, seers, um, they've always been misunderstood. Um, in a lot of cultures, um, like the medicine people have been sort of like exploited or kind of used for their gifts, but, you know, not always supported. Um, I mean, we have it in our history. I mean, if you, even if you look at things like the Salem witch trials, you know, where people who were different were persecuted. It's interesting, you know, because now in, you know, mediumship is a little bit more celebrated in a way, but there is so much stuff that is still out there that people don't, you know, they don't understand or they think they understand and they really don't. Um, so I try to educate people. That is part of what I do. Oh, see, so look good, actually. This is great. Okay, okay. <sighs> do you think that you would want a reading that is more focused on psychic, past, present, future, or do you think you would want a reading that's more connecting to people that you've lost? Or both? Both, but I am really interested in my future okay. and what that looks like. So I'm going to start the reading. Okay. Um, I do, when I meet pe with people privately like this, I use oracle cards. I don't consider myself a card reader, but they just, uh, um, something about just like the colors and the kind of the flow of energy, um, I just sort of like to have them with me. And um, yeah, so we'll get started. Um, I'm going to start with a prayer. And then we'll start with whatever messages that I, I feel for you. And we'll just see what comes up and we'll go from there. Um, do you feel ready to start? I'm ready. Okay, cool. Being a medium or just the medium world is just full of skeptics. It's almost like this, this dark side of being a medium where it's clouded with people trying to prove that you don't know, that you're not a medium. Do you feel like there's a dark side to the medium world? I don't necessarily group that in with the mediumship world you know i mean I, I i guess it is a world that we have to connect with because it's it's something that we're is put around us but i mean you mean the skeptics yeah this you know and i i think there's a spectrum to that you know when we say skeptics you know i think everybody's a skeptic right i mean because it, it, it you know and, and if you're gonna say to somebody oh i talk to dead people i do think that that's a claim that requires um uh, evidence or you know i mean proof for me it's like i've never seen a medium or uh, psychic, but I believe in them, but I also believe that there are so many people out there that aren't actually psychics and mediums that are charging people saying they're psychic and mediums that it almost clouds the industry for me because I don't know who to trust and I don't want to pay somebody and get a wrong reading and it like guide my life because I'm like li those words I can't get out of my head you know right, right, right. even when you had followed me I got all of a sudden I got a lot of like DMs from fake accounts from you being mm -hmm. like, oh, if you want a reading, right. pay this. Like, right. so people are like scamming and using your name right. to take right. advantage of the vulnerable people. Right. How does that make you feel? I mean, yeah, we try to be really, really safe about that. I mean, it, sometimes it just we can't. You know, we, we can't. I, mean, I have I have a full time social media person that sits there and blocks them, but a lot of times they go and make new accounts and things like that. And and you have to be discerning and very, very careful. I mean, for that and for other reasons, if you want to have a reading with a medium, you know, there's certain things you could do. A lot of times I tell people, you know, see if they've written a book, if they maybe are doing a large event with a lot of people before you just go and buy a private reading. You know, see if they have, I mean, there's some testing services out there. So there's a few institutions that actually test mediums. So that might be something. And I was talking about this in my mentorship because we did a whole class on ethics there is no ethical governing body you know so um you know you could leave here today and say i'm a medium i just decided you don't know, put up a sign and be a medium morally and ethically it's totally wrong but there wouldn't be anything that really is legally wrong about that it's not a protected title um so i think that does create issues i do feel somebody coming through on the left side of you hmm which is usually your dad's side of the family. So I don't know who that is just yet, obviously, but I do feel usually like this side is your mother's side, this side would be your dad's side, but it could be different too. But I'm thinking it's somebody on your dad's side of the family. Matt, do you have the name Mary? Yes. Okay. Is that somebody that died? Yes. Okay. So I feel that person's coming through too. Um, okay, yeah, so that person is also feeling like more on the left side. 
So I think maybe that might be, is that your, on your dad's side, Mary? Yes. Okay. Is that your grandmother? Yeah. Okay. When did you first find out that you had this gift? How old were you? So when I was about four or five years old, I have distinct memories of seeing my grandfather, who was my father's dad, who I never met in life. Sort of like an apparition, you know, like a, a figure that I could kind of seem almost like if you could think about it, if you took a black and white movie and you kind of like uh, sort of projected it. I mean, I could, I, I remember knowing that he was not of this physical realm, but I, you know, I was five, six, I didn't really understand it, but I remember feeling very comforted by it. My mom was very, um, you know, Catholic, you know, that is the devil, that's something, you know, that's that's bad. And my dad, he was just a very sort of hair trigger, sort of very like anything would set him off type of energy. So this was just another thing of like, oh my God, you know, what the fuck? And it just got progressively worse, especially with my father, um, where he got so... It just became if it was even spoken of or even brought up or e even it got to the point if his dad was even discussed in any way, he would explode into a rage. And I just kind of learned to kind of like relax my mind and I really liked it and I became more in touch with my inner world. And I kind of started on a spiritual path. I started to kind of, I was like, it was really the first thing that sort of made me feel better. And um, just kind of was more in that world and of around people who, you know, nobody was, you know, in my house when I said, oh, you know, I saw dead, you know, it was like these people were more like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, I see dead people too. You know, they were just like, it was just a different, you know, so I became more aware of it. And then I just started to practice with it, took a couple classes. Um, I've since learned that I'm, I'm some, something that would be considered what we would call a natural medium. So there are people that are born with abilities. In my profession, we call them natural mediums. So they're not a medium like some people come into their gifts later in life, some people through illness or an accident, some people through their own grief or trauma, some people we just say like they just kind of train into it. As long as you have a curiosity and an open heart, open mind, you I mean, anybody can learn to connect at a deeper level to their spirit guides. It's weird. So what's coming through here is also that you, you actually have a lot of healing gifts yourself. You are doing kind of like almost like a healing in the community. And I feel like you kind of, this is kind of one of your soul's purposes. I mean, I feel like there's other things too. Um, but I kind of feel like there's a, yeah, that's what I'm seeing. I also want to tell you this Mary person that I'm feeling, um, she's around your sister a lot. She's kind of guiding her. And she's telling me, it's not a bad thing, but she's telling me that your sister has been like, I don't know if lost is the right word, but she's been like trying to figure things out. And I feel like this Mary person that's coming through, she's kind of trying to help her a little bit and kind of guide her. Um, so I don't know if, if, if your sister's been like just trying to figure out her path in life or what she wants to do or something like this, but this Mary person is coming in and saying that she's, she's kind of guiding her, she's kind of helping her. I feel like I'm, I'm, for some reason that I'm seeing that. There's a man coming through that I'm picking up um, and I see him in the outdoors. Um, so he might have been somebody that liked to be in the outdoors a lot. I'm not really sure how to interpret that. Um, but I'm hearing the name Dan. Do you know if there would be anybody that died named Dan? Yes. Okay. I did see there's like one person who's really like out to get you, I feel like. Mm -hmm. when I did a little bit of research on you, uh -huh. and there's like this one woman, I'm not gonna name her name, but what? she has, I'm sure you know who she is, and she has all these websites, and mm -hmm. she talked about how she made fake Facebooks and mm -hmm. like put information on the Facebooks, mm -hmm. and then when she did a reading with you, you had mentioned that information from those Facebooks. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that or not? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about her. I mean, I've definitely seen um, that, yeah, she, well, first off, is, is my understanding is, is that she goes after all mediums. And she'll post things like investigation, yeah. um, sting operation, and I mean, I'm not trying to be derogatory about anybody's profession, but as far as my understanding, when I've looked into her, um, she has no scientific training whatsoever. 
Um, she has no training in metaphysics. She has no training in science or spirituality. I have sat, and then I'll get back to her, um, I have actually worked with um, uh, Dr. Gary Schwartz, who is a tenured professor at the University of Arizona. Um, and, and Dr. Schwartz has research mediums. He actually has built his whole career over it. If you Google him and learn about him, he has books about it. I mean, he's a Harvard trained psychologist and he's text tested me multiple times, uh, double blind, triple blind. And he does it just because then he's got an, you know, there's an HBO documentary and he, um, has sat with me and actually did, did a, you know, he, he actually wrote a, like a report about me and said that, you know, he obviously he you know he goes I, I you know I can't say about every reading he's ever done because I wasn't there but the three readings that he did for me I put him in double triple blind experiments and his accuracy was among the best I've tested so that's the level of legitimacy that I feel and I think that's great I think that you know embracing a more science testing I mean sure that's great because we could only learn from that um you know, with her, I mean, I, I just don't know anything um, sort of, I mean, you know, yeah, she says this, she says she's gone here, she's, you know, filmed this, taped this. It's like, well, that's not really an experiment because it's just like her, you know, your opinions are not a scientific experiment, really, you know. Even at one point, um, though I, I don't think I would do this now, but at one point I had even said to her, well, I mean, I'll give you a reading, you know, why don't you have a reading with me? No, she didn't want to do that. That would have been good content. That would have been fascinating. Yeah, and I, I did offer to do that and she said no. She's kind of the more vocal one, but I mean, there, you know, there's other people who say, okay, well, you know, you, 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 you know, um, well, you just guess things. Oh, you just make up things. Oh, you look up things, you know, online or figure things out or something. I don't look up things about people. I mean, that's just not something that I'm even interested in doing. Luckily, 90% of the people that come across her stuff, they like I hear back from them that they feel like she's crazy. And then there's the 10% that it does feel like I have had people that have said, I had a reading with you and now I see this and it makes me doubt things. And um, so that's unfortunate, but... Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. And, and, and I think that, you know, like I said, with my readings, um, I try to do the most authentic. I would never, you know, sit and Google people, research things. I mean, I'm just not even interested in doing that. That's my take on that. And I don't know really, you know. God, it must be exhausting, you know, to have to always prove yourself. I do find that that part of things is probably the one thing that... Um, is just really challenging about my profession is the the sort of proving I, I think if I could just be like on a desert island just doing my readings and not have all that excess energy of craziness I would probably like it but it's just the reality that in the 21st century that's just it's just not that way you know and, and there is a lot of defending and protecting and I believe and I and I still stand by this I mean I think she's entitled to her opinion you know if that's her opinion it's a free country we we, we do you know you do get to express your opinion and if that's her opinion I mean I the only thing I don't like about it is I just it makes me feel bad when somebody sees that and then it's sort of a deterrent for them to have a healing experience or it clouds their mind and you use that word too like the clouding um so i'm hoping you know maybe if people see this interview that they'll you know i would love for them to just you know come to a reading come to a 20 dollars event you know just kind of see what it's about and then make your decision because she obviously has an agenda which i don't really understand but apparently she's obsessed with me i don't know what her issue is he's addressing something to your dad so this could be something that maybe he would tell you would this guy have known your dad Yes. Okay, so he, because he's addressing your dad. So he's saying um, to tell your dad that he was very proud of him. And um, I wondered if maybe he's saying this, because I don't know if he was the type of person where maybe he didn't express that. I, I really don't know, but he's just saying, like, he wants to make sure that that's clear for some reason. I, I don't really know why that's coming through, but that's what I'm hearing. You have a very strong work ethic. Um, you actually had a path life where you were a monk. So you have kind of like a monastic sort of like, you have that sort of work ethic where you kind of can work yourself to the bone type of type of personality. Um, and so you sort of have that like, you're on your own, you're kind of like, it's kind of imprinted in your soul. Beautiful. Okay, good. That was so special. Oh good, I'm glad you got something on 
Oh my gosh, and it's just so accurate to my life. It's wild that you can, it's wild that you can see that kind of stuff. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I will never forget this moment. Truly. Okay. <laughs> and when you were doing it, I was just like, Matt, like this is this is really, really special, you know? People and I, I, I couldn't help but think how many people in my audience probably would wish to be in my shoes right now getting a reading from you. And I, I just feel so honored to be oh, here. Well, thank you. Well, I'm glad you came. Thank you so much for taking for the sure. time and for sharing your gifts. It's, it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so touched. Oh my gosh.